you for having me here. My name is Kerry Glass. I am the founder of a nonprofit called Memories Live. Uh, I was asked if I would have a PowerPoint presentation uh, for my presentation this evening, but that's not really what I do. I like to connect with people one-on-one -on -one in the best and most meaningful way possible. So I find that PowerPoint is, is not my thing, and this is how I tend to share uh, what it is I do. And um, you'll learn and see how, what my passion is for this. So I started Memories Live just over 10 years ago when I learned of a woman in a neighboring community who had lung cancer. She was 39, she had two kids under five, and it really struck me as a mom who had two young kids at under five as well, that these kids would never know the sound of their mom's voice and never know advice from her point of view and stories from her mouth and her memories. And I thought to myself, what if I can sit with someone who has a life limiting illness and help them to leave a legacy, help to them to leave their stories, help them to share their advice. So I went to the dinner table that night to my husband and I said, I know I'm an art therapist now, and I'm a stay-at-home mom now, but this is the next chapter of my life, and I want to create this nonprofit. I do not want to have to charge people at all, and I want to be able to do this at no fee for individuals who are going through this phase of their lives. So I went out and I tried to get my, got my first client, and I filmed my first movie, and, and off I went. Now, if we rewind a little bit, and go back to my life before that. I was an art therapist. I worked in a nursing home for five and a half years. I had the best job possible. I loved going to work to over 400 individuals every day and they would share their stories, share their lives with me and I would do a lot of group projects. I had the uh, opportunity to do a few one-on-ones which were really special and incredibly memorable. I would sit with a couple of individuals week by week, and they would just reminisce, share their stories with me. And one day I said, I need to grab a pen and paper because these stories are amazing. And week after week, I grabbed my pen and paper and I'd write everything down. I'd go back to my computer because we didn't really have the laptops or anything. Go back to my computer, type it up, print it up, read it to them the next week, make more notes. And lo and behold, we'd made two books for two different individuals. Families loved them, the individuals loved them, and they were beautiful memories and legacies that I'd created for these individuals. I left that job on the best of circumstances to go work, uh, to go to raise my kids and, and become a mother. And through that time, I would create movies out of vacations we had or birthday parties and special occasions and I take the live footage and I would put it together with the photographs and I'd create these short quick five minute movies for my kids to watch. I have not made one since I started Memories Live. I've, which is in 10 years I haven't made any. I feel pretty bad but <laughs> I'm too busy making my Memories Live movies. But I said to myself let me take my skills of being able to be with someone and my skills of a movie maker and put them together and see if I can create something. So the first year of Memories Live, I filmed 12 people. The second year I filmed 18 people. And to date, I film about 20 to 30 people a year. I film an equal amount of men and women. The average age is about 55. Uh, when I first started, I really only wanted to make it for people in their 50s and, and younger. But I said, how do I really turn anyone down? You know, everyone has a story. Everyone has something that they want to share. So I really opened it up to everyone. And organically, it's become uh, the average age about 55. So how does it work, especially because I'm in New Jersey and you all are in Texas, I believe. So I had a young woman who called me from the Austin area and said, I have a friend in New Jersey who just did this and we both have this diagnosis and she told me about this wonderful experience that she had and can you film me? 
And for the first eight years of Memories Live, I had to turn down people who were out of my geographic area. It was impossible for me to travel, not only because I had kids, but because the foundation didn't make enough money for me to travel. And going to people on the day of, sometimes people cancel on me. And the reality is that we all don't wake up feeling so great someday. So if I were to hop on a plane or a train and go to somebody, um, I just couldn't guarantee that the movie, the filming would happen. So this woman, so that's why I would not be able to film outside of my geographic area. And I said to this woman, you know what? Let me think out of the box here because with technology these days, it has to be able to work. So I called my people at Apple and I called people who I know are IT people. And basically how it works for me to film you, you need to have either Zoom like this and you'll be able to see this recording and the quality of it. It's okay, it's not bad, it's not great. It's not as good as if I would be in your room with you and filming you, and it's not as good as if you would film yourself. So how it works if you don't use Zoom, and I can't come to you, is that you'd need two phones. One cell phone that has a video camera, and the technology on these cell phones these days are amazing. They're as good as my $2,000 camera that I carry around with me. So what you would do would be film yourself on your phone. You just flip it around. Instead of taking a selfie picture, you take a selfie video. And then I'm on, the, I'm on a landline with you or on another phone with you, and I'll call you. And it's almost as if I'm there, but you'll, I'm, I'm on the phone with you, and I'll start asking you the questions that I will email you ahead of time. And we'll go through the questions, and I'll dig a little deeper, and I'll interrupt you at, at certain points. And sometimes I won't interrupt you because I'll feel bad because you're going on a good tangent. And we'll go through all the questions and all the topics, and we'll make sure we've gone through everything you wanted to ask, talk about. We'll make sure I take out anything you may have said accidentally or decided you did not want included. And I will be on the phone with you throughout the entire process, and I'll remind you to hit record, and I'll remind you to hit pause. And I'll remind you to have water next to you. And I'll remind you to make sure that the sunlight isn't in your eyes and that you're holding the camera at the right angle and you're not cutting your head off by being like this or you're not leaving too much room up on top and cutting off and not having enough of yourself in the frame of the video. So even though I'm not physically there, I will still be there. Our phone conversation will start as a FaceTime so I can see you and you can see me and we can connect in that way and when we're done filming when you're done filming yourself um, it'll end with a facetime co conversation so we can again connect and um, finish in a nice supportive way so the questions uh, that i've come up with are nothing you don't know it's all about you and your life and celebrating your life and who you are and what makes you you so we'll talk about grandparents we'll talk about your parents we'll talk about your childhood We'll talk about your schooling, I'll talk about friendships and relationships in your life. We'll talk about favorite movies, favorite food, favorite vacation places, favorite hobbies. Um, talk about your children and your family and you'll leave advice for them about advice for relationships and being a good person, advice for um, your schooling, advice for their career um, and words of wisdom that you may have. I send you out a document with questions and conversation starters. I encourage you to take out topics you don't want to talk about. And I encourage you to add topics that I may have forgotten that might be important to you. Some people have said, Carrie, your questions are great, but I want to do this on my own. I've created my own document and my own skit, my own screen. And I'll say, great, that's fantastic. Or Carrie, I'm going to use half of yours and half of mine. It's okay, there's no wrong way, no right way to do this. There's no making mistakes. There's no messing up. This is going to show who you are, who you are in this moment in time that we are together virtually and uh, that we're filming this. So the scariest thing for people is actually the act of doing it and saying, this is so weird. I'm looking at myself and I'm filming. And after about two or three minutes, once people get talking, the process takes over and it then becomes a beautiful thing. 
Um, the average length of the movies are about 45 to 60 minutes. I tend not to go over 60 minutes. It becomes a little too long for the families to watch. Every topic that we talk about becomes a chapter in the movie. So it's not just 45 or 50 minutes or 60 minutes of you talking straight unedited. I take myself out, which is me talking to you. And then I add in text, like you'll see on the screen here, and I'll create chapters. So the family watches it back. It's broken up to chapters or segments. It becomes easy to watch. Um, the only prerequisite is you need to have a uh, life-limiting illness to be able to do this, and I will do this at no cost. I do have plenty of people that call me and say, I don't have life-limiting illness, but I still want to do this. And uh, for those people, I do have a fee. Um, the you finished segment is a uh, finished MOOC product is on a USB drive. And let me grab one. So I send about two or three of these USB drives out to the family. So they have something concrete. I encourage them to plug it into the computer when they, it arrives and they have it and um, save it onto the computer and then they'll have it there forever. And then if more families want it, you can just mail around the USB drive and um, share it with family members. At the conclusion of the live movie that I create and that I edit, I ask people if they want to share photographs and I can create a slideshow of photographs. So I receive the photographs the same way that I will receive the movie footage from you and I send you out a little cheat sheet uh, of how to send the movie footage to me and the same way of how you can send the photographs to me all via email and depending what kind of phone you have um, it becomes pretty easy there's different ways to share all this footage. Um, from beginning to end um, once I have all the footage and all the photographs, I can have the finished product to you within about uh, two weeks, sometimes a little quicker, depending on how busy I am. Uh, people do tend to take a long time to get the photos to me, so I try to discourage from people who take too long because I see it's so, it causes a little bit of stress and strain. Um, but otherwise, if you can get the photos to me quickly, then I can get the finished product to you quickly. And if you want photos included and it takes you longer to get the photos to me, then I'm obviously not gonna have the finished product out to you. Um, I'm just looking at the questions. Um, privacy, copies, you get two copies. Privacy, before we start, I ask you for giving permission. I have a release form that would allow me to use any little parts of this movie only for promotional purposes only. When I go make presentations to hospitals or hospices or presentations like this, you'll see at the bottom of the screen is a sample movie. I make about one a year. I feature about three or four of my clients and those clients have signed the release form that gives you permission to use tiny bits of the movie. If you choose not to sign it, it's okay. I filmed over 200 people. I have plenty of footage, but I always like to have more than less and especially if some people say some really cool and great and inspiring and funny and warm and creative things. Um, I've had individuals read stories to their loved ones, to their children, sing songs, play the guitar, read poetry, have, sit down and have coffee with them, cook in the kitchen. I've had people who did not want to be seen because they don't like how they look anymore, uh, send me photographs and I will have their voice and streaming throughout the movie and photographs of them in place of their image if they don't want to be seen. Uh, there's many ways to be creative and to create a memorable legacy movie like this. So I'm pretty much open to doing almost anything. Um, the, uh, in, in, so in just over 10 years, I filmed over 200 individuals. I have been fortunate not to be able to, have, able to charge anyone for what I do. I am supported by grants that come and go. I have a fundraiser once a year. Unfortunately, this year it didn't quite happen, um, but I usually have a fundraiser and um, very nice, generous board members who allow me to be able to create these one-of-a-kind one movies for individuals. Um, 
any questions at this point, please send them along. Um, I do uh, film these movies for people who, again, have life-limiting illnesses. Most people share this with their families before they pass on, and I'd say 99% of the families know that their loved ones have made this. Their loved ones tend not to watch it until they have passed, but um, I have a handful of people who have watched it before they've passed. It's a personal choice. It's, it's, um, people ask me what to do when I say it. It's, it's 100% a personal choice. The um, responses I get from individuals who I have filmed, uh, they have felt a sense of catharsis that this was such a great um, thing to do for them. They've been living with a lot of guilt and wanted to create something for their families and leave behind photographs or jewelry. Um, but, but doing this was even more memorable and meaningful for people. And for people who, the family members, they have been so grateful to have their loved one's voice and image again. And I've had plenty of people say, wow, I didn't know my dad, you know, ran track in high school, or I didn't know my mom played in the band. And, and people kind of really do open up to me and, and share stories with me. And um, it really is a, a beautiful process. So um, if you do have any questions, please, please ask me questions. If you want to see a sample movie, there's a sample movie on my website. My email address and my phone number are on my website. If you have any questions at another time that kind of pop up into your mind. Um, I think, okay, here we have a question. Okay, the, be the best way to contact me, um, email, phone call, I get back, text me, I get back the day of. This is what I do. Um, it's, and it's, um, I know a lot of people want to get this done kind of quickly. So yes, I do email and call or text you back the day, most of the time that, um, that you do reach out to me. How far do I book out people? Well, I've um, filmed people the week that they've called me, so pretty quickly. And if I film people, you know, two or three or four weeks or however many weeks out um, is, is fine too. You know, I, I film 20 or 30 people a year, so I'm not, my phone's not unfortunately ringing off the hook, but that's okay. I, I film enough to kind of keep me busy. But I've definitely filmed um, people the week that they've passed away and I've filmed people a year before they've passed away. So it just comes down to when someone is comfortable and when they want to do this. So basically the better that you're feeling and looking is um, when it's a really good time to, to do this. Uh, a lot of people associate, have told me that this associates with kind of giving up hope. And I think about this as like another piece of insurance. And if you beat the illness, you can always kind of hide it in that drawer or in your closet or burn it for all I care. But um, if you don't, this will be something really great for your family. So um, it's just, for me, in my mind, I feel like this, this is a little piece of insurance. Um, who wants to, yes, I will 100% do this for a single person with no kids who wants to leave this for the rest of the family. We all have stories. We're all connected to families. So if you want to create this for, for family members, why not? A hundred thousand percent. I've done it many, many times before for individuals who um, don't have kids and, and create this for their extended family. Absolutely. Please keep the questions coming. Uh, I think I've almost exceeded my time, but um, if you think of questions later, please feel free to email, call, text me. All my information is on my website. Uh, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think so. Um, 
but I am in New Jersey and uh, with this new way of filming, it, it really works out beautifully, especially with the quality of the video cameras on the phones these days. So <clears throat> thank you for your comment. Any other questions? Thank you, Carrie. This was wonderful. Yep. Um, and uh, yes, um, this video will also live on our uh, website and the video resource library. So if you want to go back and watch the video, um, you can. We're going to share it with everyone um, in our um, network. So, um, thank you again for joining us. I appreciate you taking out the time and thank you ladies for us this evening and um, please make sure to uh, contact Carrie um, and um, her website has all of the information and please let your navigator know if you have any questions as well.